My name is uh, Daniel Bustet, and I'm here to talk about creating real-time hair in uh, Blender. I work over here, actually, uh, at Goodbye Cancer Studios. We are uh, creating VFX for film and TV and uh, game cinematics as well. Doing that uh, breathtaking guy over there. <laughs> all right. And on my uh, yeah personal time, I've been doing a lot of like Blender demos and stuff for the Blender Foundation. Playing around a lot with Eevee. Uh, and uh, during the Blender conference, uh, I was down and talked and uh, got a new nice uh, nickname by the YouTube. Uh, <laughs> Subtitle algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone calls me Donna now at the office. <laughs> I love it. Cool. So this is what we're gonna have a look at today. So um, yeah, it's basically like having a lot of pre-made setups in terms of textures and stuff like that, and shaders, and then like the entire grooming process becomes um, a lot faster than it usually is. I'm not saying that this will be a fantastic uh, piece of art, but you know, it really it feels like it's a stable workflow and it gets the job done really fast. So the entire approach is just working really procedurally with the entire thing. Hey, you are. <laughs> All right, let's start with the hair textures. So uh, nothing fancy here, just a slanted plane and growing some hair there as well. So you have a nice uh, blend at the root there. And then this is uh, the scene where I render out the hair. So I have a, oh, let's see if I can activate, ah, perfect. So I have a camera over here and then a grid, which is not seen in render. And uh, these are the hair objects and then I have a background. So from the camera, it looks kind of like this. And I basically place all these hair objects within a grid that is uh, equally spaced. Could be like this, or like this, or like this. So the idea is that I basically um, put the most dense uh, strands to the left, and uh, the more I go up to uh, the right or up to um, top right, uh, it gets thinner and thinner. And then the shader is basically set up so it's um, I can procedurally uh, change what kind of um, thickness or density I want on the hair strands. So here's just a yeah, just to show that off real quick. So basically, in the shader, I can just drag the slider and change the um, density. So these all have the same UVs. So I don't really have to change the UVs. And it's I set up in Blender now, but it could be uh, set up in uh, Houdini or uh, any game engine, really. And the nice thing is that you only need one UV set, which is normalized within the UV space, and uh, just a bunch of, like, um, you need um, vertex color per uh, geometry island, basically. <clears throat> so, hair shader passes. So this is basically what I render out. So it's like a RGB texture with um, packed. So ambient occlusion goes into the red channel. And um, the intercept, or the gradient from root to tip, goes into the green channel. You get that from the hair info. Works in Eevee, works in the cycles. And then I also have like um, a random ID per strand as well. So you can see that in the close-up here. <clears throat> and then I just compile the entire thing. Uh, so red, green, blue into this amazing colorful texture. Okay, and then I have a secondary texture set as well. Just taking the uh, normal uh, of the hair strands. And it's... After playing around with this for a bit, it feels like it's, it's really only the, the green coordinate that I use. Um, so that means that I could actually pack this further on, perhaps putting the green channel of the normal in the alpha or something, and then just create the, like the other vectors of the normal map 
in the shader instead. So that's the normal. Cool, so let's look how the grooming works. <clears throat> so I start off with a hair cap, uh, or a growth mesh, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's interesting because we, at work, Jonas Skog, down in the bottom, uh, back there, he's done a wonderful hair cap, but it turns out, like, in Blender, you really need to pay attention to, like, um, having uh, the topology, like, kind of follow the uh, pattern on the hair, so it wouldn't work with having a, a pole here, because the, uh, the hair card sort of aligns to uh, the closest edge, almost, right? So you kind of want to have something that goes in this direction. And also I want to, ooh, <laughs> fast. Right, I want to also separate these into uh, two hair systems. So one for the right and one for the left, because otherwise I get a lot of uh, interpolation errors, like in the um, forehead area. I don't want to have a lot of strands going crazy there. <clears throat> It's a pretty fast video, I'll try to uh, stop now and then. So here I'm just creating a new hair system, um, down here. Can you see my, oh yeah, you can, oh, great. Then just setting um, yeah, some kind of hair length that makes sense. And here I'm going into the weight painting mode, so I'm just gonna paint what I wanna be, um, have as a density. So I'm just painting the, the right area. And this is like a little gamey sheet thing, because like in VFX, we would basically have the same amount of density on the entire head. But in order to get a nice uh, coverage, you kind of want to just have the uh, hair coming up from the top, so that you get as much as coverage on the head as possible. Cool, now I just plug in the density map. So now we only have hairs on that right side. Just cleaning that up a bit. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of hair from the start. So I just wanna manually place my hair. So go into the add brush and just place them. Actually like overshoot a bit. So they're, even though they're gonna grow from the right side, I add them on the slightly bit to the left. Just comb those. Put this down. Just cut on stuff. Okay. Yeah, so now I'm changing into uh, interpolator mode. And as you can see, there's just like a couple of strands up here, so you get a really weird interpolation further down. So it turns out that when you're working with um, proper hair, like doing strands for uh, VFX, um, working with uh, strands is really good, but when you're gonna do uh, hair cards, it's better to change into, let's see what it's called, uh, something else. Yeah. I missed it, never mind. So. Basically, uh, in the viewports uh, display settings, you have to change to something called um, none, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see here that, oh, here we go, yeah, display as rendered. That's the thing you want to change into. Uh, uh, come on. Oh, it's coming. Yeah, so anyway, down here you change from render to none, basically. And somehow, magically, that just works a lot better with hair cards. So here I'm just setting up the left side. Same procedure, just painting a density map, adding hairs, combing them down. That's about it. All right, next slide. I'm not used to Mac either, by the way. It's like, uh. <laughs> 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 
Cool. So this is basically the, the hair card that we're going to use. And the cool thing is like, in this presentation, I will just use this hair card, but you could basically set it up with this hair card, and then you perhaps realize, you know, I, I want to kind of Medusa hair instead, so you can just have a model of a snake instead that, you know, change it. And the only specific thing is that it's, it's, it's weird, because it's hard-coded that you have to model it in the positive y direction. Yeah, so now I'm adding vertex color attributes, one called index and one called uh, value. We'll see later on how that works. So now I'm adding a particle instance modifier. So basically this is <coughs> a modifier that I put on the hair strand, and then I'm gonna connect it to the hair system. And that means it's gonna scatter on top of the, yeah, it's basically gonna put one of these on each of the hair on the hair system. So I'm just uh, putting, uh, sorry, I'm connecting the hair cap in there. Just um, changing to create long paths. And oh, look at that, we're already there. And then I can change uh, position, random position, and kind of like twist it randomly or Another thing. So this is an important thing. Here I'm adding those um, uh, vertex color attributes, basically. So when um, this modifier creates the hair strands along each curve, it also assigns like a random uh, color value between zero and one, and we're going to use that later on to pick up um, in the shader and uh, you know kind of procedurally assign uh, density to the um, uh, hair strand. So here you can see the different color values. Yeah, oh, there we go. Viewport display, I changed from rendered to none. <laughs> Yeah, none. That's it. That looks better. Uh, just classic tumbling around the three D objects. I've only all done that. So now I'm just setting up. The nice thing now is that this um, these hair cards. They're already set up, right? So basically, I just need to copy those and uh, assign them to the other hair system on the left side. <coughs> just duplicate that, and then I just connect it. Instead of right, I just check left there. So that's really cool. Grooming away. And one of the interesting things with the Blender compared to other like grooming softwares is that you can have, um, you don't need to have the same amount of spans on all of your curves. You can have like 20 on one and uh, five on one. And you can also like have a <coughs> uh, larger density of uh, points on the lower part of the curve as well so that you can have more details and curls and stuff on the lower end of the hair. All right. I finished this, uh, this presentation like 2.30 last night, so <laughs> it's going well. Yep, so here I'm just uh, grooming away and just trying to avoid those kind of gaps that exist and it's, yeah. It's, it's nicer to just start with a sparse set of guides, so you don't have too much stuff to pull around. Does anyone have any questions when we uh, look at this? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, how do you make sure they're not like twisted, you're standing in this direction, the hair parts? 
Yeah, that's it's interesting because that was one thing that I really struggled with in the beginning. And one key thing was making sure that the growth mesh was for the hair cap um, had the topology going along the intended hair strand direction, basically. And you know, all of us we have a you know we have like a what was that? Mit Bianna. Like a, you know, where, where all the hair like uh, parts so uh, you ju if you have a character where the Biana is on the side you just put that you know that topology uh, to the side <coughs> sorry did that uh, did that answer your question okay, thanks. Let's see the next slide here oh Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Would you just use a single guide for 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 a backstick? Uh, a single guide? Like, no, I, I, no. You mean like one hair curve? No, no. I don't, I don't mean, but but the, uh, align it uh, <coughs> sort of, instead of going from, from top to side, it goes just from front to bottom. Oh right. Yeah. Good question. The, the nice thing is that you can use the rotation of the um, modifier basically. So you just even though the hair cards will stand like this at first. You can just uh, drag the slider on the modifier and just twist them. So that's a pretty easy solution, hopefully. So here we can see like the base coverage cards are red and the detail hair cards are blue. So, yeah. And here we can see some, oh, there's issues here. We can see intersection. Okay, optimization. <coughs> Blender is actually really good at this. Um, so here the hair is consisting of 21,000 triangles. And I just use a um, decimation modifier and pull it down to 5,000. So that was pretty good, I think. Uh, and here you can see the, <laughs> you know, it doesn't look as good, but it's like pretty impressive that you, with this horrible topology, you can reach this kind of result. Um, so basically, you just take the decimation modifier and uh, make sure that it uses the angle of the edge and delete those that have a very low angle, basically. Okay. Oh, look at that. I recorded a video about it. Ah. One hair object, and then I'm adding the um, decimation modifier there. So um, <clears throat> so you can see here that it um, recognizes the face count. Sorry, ha, ha, am I like pulling over? Wait, okay. you'll just have to bear with me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, then I can just copy the uh, decimation modifier and change the, the, the um, algorithm, I guess, <clears throat> to planar instead of collapse. And then you get a like an angle limit there. So you can see here when I start dragging that along. And then you can add like a triangulation modifier at the very end of the stack as well. Uh, yeah, this is popular <laughs> as well. So basically, um, I've seen this like in real-time trees or uh, hairs and stuff like that. Basically, you have a very like smooth um, object, and you just transfer the normal direction from that object over to your uh, target's object. So basically, the normals from this yellow blob will be copied over to the hair system uh, by using a data transfer modifier and um, I um, transfer the face corner data and use the custom normals. That's the thing I'm transferring. So here you can see the difference. It's um, kind of subtle, but it kind of catches, you have to look where it catches the highlight, I guess. And it, when you start rotating around this object, it's basically the more you transfer the custom normals, the more it kind of appears like a sphere almost, so it's very uh, equal shading. So here's some very useful tools. One thing I use all the time is uh, select random, 
So that's in the select menu. Uh, this is for both meshes and for hair as well. So it's super handy, just uh, grooming something, selecting some random uh, curves, and then just like offsetting them so you don't get this super straight groom, but instead of like having a bit of overlap. Then we have select linked. You basically just hover over an object that is connected with the edges or faces or whatever, and you get the entire um, island basically. So this works for geometry and it works for hair as well. And you can also control click like a single point on the curve and just expand with control numpad plus. And you also have the ability to select tips or roots. So that's really ha handy if you just want to add some points in the lower part of the curve to get those little curly things. All right. That was my talk. Thank you so much.